us who's out there with a the bullhorn like that. But well, but I'm, I'm I'm actually interested to uh, what you heard 20 years ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and and get things started, ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday night on Liberty Radio. Friday night, August second, two thousand twenty-four. That means it's time for us to take your calls and find out what is on your mind tonight. The link is in the Telegram channel, as usual. That's how Rob got here. Returning champion Rob, always the first one to chime in on a Friday night. And now he's even got the cool background effects going. (laughs) What's going on, Drizzle? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you doing? What's on your mind? Ah. Thinking about World War Three kicking off. Um, oh yeah, what have you heard? Oh, just the same old nonsense. You know, Israel provokes people, um, trying to get a reaction. It's like the uh, petulant child, you know. It just seems like it's it's the exact same game plan, uh, over and over and over again. It's like the what was the uh, was it Nebraska? I think. That used to run like the the sweep right, and it's just nobody could stop it, right? Like everybody knew it was coming, but nobody knew how to stop it. So they just get pummeled, they get they get trampled, run over. That's what it's like, because nobody seems to know how to stop what's going on. It's like being in the Olympics and uh, being a female and you know facing a male opponent. <laughs> Interesting you should say that because we actually know how that how that uh, works out. We we saw a couple examples of it this week. Yeah, I don't know if this is like this is the sign of uh the collapse of everything. I, I keep saying that every week, but I mean they had they had the damn pale horse they, at, in the opening yeah, ceremony, not not just in like artistic representation. But they had an honest to God white horse as part of the ceremony, and and somebody was riding it, looking like fucking death. I mean, why not have the other three horses, of the apocalypse, right there behind it? Might as well, right? Dress them up like uh, they're from Mordor. <laughs> it couldn't get any more ridiculous. <laughs> the spectacle. I. I uh... I really fear for the future when I see stuff like that. Normalizing, uh, just, I don't even know what to call it. I guess I'm a fucking old dude. Get off my lawn at this point. (laughs) Well, the people people who want to be left alone are not going to be left alone. It's become very apparent. No, they're not. And that's the, that's kind of the whole point of it. I don't I don't understand how it is that some people at this point are still able to just bury their head in the sand and pretend like it's not actually going on. Well, I, I think they're just they're just making people say it. They want everybody to say it because like you can't you can't hide a collapse, a financial collapse. I mean, do we even have narco dollars flowing in? I that don't, that's, again, that's stuff? the thing. I don't think they're going to try to hide it at all doesn't seem to be i think what they're actually doing and i don't know if i've act i don't know if i've actually said this anywhere before yet but i think that what we're witnessing whether we understand it or not is the the new system is actually being installed as we speak that work is happening right now there there is coming a point at some point in the very near future where that system will be ready to go it'll be operational it's not very far off at this point and what they're doing is they're hollowing out the old system in the process of building the new one so that by the time the new one is ready the old system is just going to crumble and and basically fall away. And the only thing that's going to be left is the new system fully functional. So when so in other first? words, the, the new system update is not optional. Eventually it's like on your cell phone when you try Correct. To, 
you will post have to the take update the update eventually, phone. or you then just you won't like, have access anymore. It was always to planned to be phone, that way. You're yes. Like, what the fuck? It's just updating itself now. It's like it's not even my phone. It never was your phone. Nope. Yeah. It's amazing how the uh, planned obsolescence model is in every fucking thing you buy. Like, I just had like one of those Brita filter things on the top of my kitchen sink. And just all of a sudden, it just started like every time you would turn it on, water would spray out of it. I mean, it's probably like two years old. Yeah. And uh, just yeah. replace it. Pay no attention. Problem. Pay attention, everyone. Now that I've said that, because I don't think I've heard anybody else say that specific theory about the global economy yet what's what's about to happen wait pay attention and see which which of the approved voices in independent media you hear run with that theory because there's there's people watching that are that are going to steal ideas and steal content from lower level uh, media producers this shit happens Oh no, Keep Drizzle! Keep your eyes look. out for that shit. Look out, Drizzle! The what? old system is fucked, but thank God they've got a new system in place just in time. Just in time. It's coming. To catch that denial of service attack taking it's down com- the whole internet. Dude, they're already starting to reveal the robots to people. That's already <laughs> happening. And again, that, there's dude? a reason why they're doing it at this particular point in time. Did you uh, happen to catch that video? I think you might have been the one who posted it. The uh, electrician was talking about working for Tesla. Yeah, I caught robots. that. Yeah. I think he's bullshit. That? I think, I think bullshit. he was. Yeah, I think he was paid to make that video. And I think it was intended to go viral. And I think people were intended to see it and spread it around. It'd be the quickest way to get yourself taken off of a uh, job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Flashing your your fucking badge like that up to the camera, dude. It's no problem to freeze frame that and figure out exactly who the fuck you are. Hey, it's no problem to go out and speak on your own, but when you speak with somebody else's, uh, you know, logo on you, it's a quite it, a different. But we thing. see we see these types of videos over and over again, right? Six months from now. Nobody's going to remember this dude. Nobody's going to remember this video. Nobody's going to remember shit about it. It's, it's fucking, it's clickbait is all it is. It's shit to get people stirred up emotionally. That's it. Dead energy. <laughs> It'll be gone. Everything seems to be getting memory hold nowadays. Uh, George Orwell's dream or uh, nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. I mean, he, he didn't have any like ideas. Aldous Huxley's wet dream. Yeah, he didn't have the uh, idea of what technology they'd have to actually implement this shit. No, Huxley. but Huxley did. Huxley did. knew every inch of the technology that was going to be available. Amazingly enough. Is the baby in compu- the, uh, the baby factories coming? Huxley they, knew dude, they've that already it was they've already be. shown us the fucking animation for it. Don't you remember Huxley, that from like a couple of years ago? Aldous Huxley foresaw the pharmaceutical festival yep. future. Yeah. Totally. Soma. I mean, with the Soma and the Epsilons, and I mean, you know, and now we've got the Paris Olympic Games, you know, lose weight you know faster. Was, uh, Cut your dick off while you're at it, you know. It, it, it was funny that the uh, the drone people that they were making in his uh, utopian society. Yeah, the epsilons with yeah. the rings around their eyes. Yeah, yeah. They would uh, put alcohol in their uh, little fetus developing tube and, uh, you know, damage them with alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a couple that shots of Jack and that'll take care of you. So wait, what? What what book was it that had the Morlocks and the Eloy? Was that Time Machine? It was the yeah. Time Machine. Oh, yeah, H.G. Yeah. Right. Wells, that fucker. Yeah, he was part of that whole clique of eugenists. Oh, he was a sadistic son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. I, have a, I have a recording of him somewhere in the Liberty Radio vault talking about how he thinks the world should be, how you should have to go in front of a board to justify your existence every 
eh, five years or so. Well, you, you got to love that mentality when you can speak about the world and speak about entire populations like they are your personal herds of human cattle that that so desperately need your management and intelligent design. You know, I mean, that's why we have planning and zoning. That's why we have homeowners associations. That's why we have all this communism so that you don't have to think about anything. We'll give your opinions to you. And this is what you're going to do. And we've already decided. Hey, if the homeowners association says it's all right, it's all right with me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought this was my house. I didn't realize I had a... <laughs> nah, son. Well, that's why I would never fucking buy a house where there was a homeowners association. That's just... Uh... Rob, you can keep the outdoor wicker furniture on your patio, but there's going to be a $700 fine. But it's only a one-time fine. And you, you got to like make sure it's furniture? painted this it is one hideous color. One hideous color. Yep. I mean... I'm sure you can fly a flag with the hammer and sickle on it. I'm sure that's all right. I we'll saw see. somebody. We'll see. We'll see. We might, we might consult video. Jackson Jackson Hinkle for that, but uh, no, I, I you'll saw pay a video. the consultancy fee. It's all right. I saw a video this week, but I didn't see a time stand. It was, it was supposedly a communist march in the city of Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. And I was looking at the video trying to, you know, picture what part of the city it was because i'm there all the time and i i couldn't make out where it was they were supposed to be marching so i don't know if it was accurate i saw a video of an american communist revolution meeting on social media it's i mean not a it's joke a we're, we're going to pretend, yeah, we're going to, it's all the power to the workers. There's not going to be some authoritarian structure to steal it all. And well, fuck it yeah, never man. Happens, never happens under communism, Rob. See, that's why he got up and walked away, because he knows that he can't defend that position. Hey, Drizzle, sickle me and hammer me until I bust the communism. I'm back in to, uh, you know, support our that's new, how the Pelosi do new it. overlords. Let yeah. me know that I can be useful in rounding up others to get shot up against the fucking wall later. <clears throat> I'm really good at poking people with the butt of a rifle. It's yeah, <laughs> one of the skills I've mastered in life. I'd like to think they'll have robots that can remove your golden teeth before going in the shower. Now we're making improvements, Chris. Yes. Yeah. Camp uh, is going to be much more automated else this they, time. They feel much like more automated from your mouth at the time. And I'm sure everything yeah. will have USB-C uh, ports and be IBM compatible. I mean, IBM was there at the first party. You know they'll be here at the at the second go around. You know, uh, which one of freaking Trump's advisors thought it was a good idea for him to start uh, pointing out that Kamala isn't really the fucking race she says she is? I mean, it's so <laughs> race funny. It's so racist to point out what you can go look up and see for yourself in public records. I know. But... You can go and see she's French Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Which, I mean, come on, man. Like, if, if you're going to make fun of all the things that you can make fun of, of Camel Toe for, and you're not going to go for the French Canadian angle, <laughs> dude. That's comedy gold. Trump should know better. His writers should know better. They are, whatever whatever he is paying them, it is way too much because they just completely miss that one. I've been digging and digging and digging. I haven't found it yet, but, but you know. But, but here's the reason. You know when I find Kamala Harris speaking Canadian French, when I find that sound clip, I'm sending a copy to you, Drizzle. Well, did you see the uh, the video of Biden getting onto the plane where the hostages came off? Like, just trying to trade himself for the hostages or something? I'm not really sure. Right, and right. they, they rejected his him final and selfless off. act for the nation. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, man, we don't fucking want you. <laughs> Whichever version of fucking you you're supposed to be. What's up, All right, Coach, 
Coach Dozer is back. What's up, guys? Are, are you driving a Zamboni? Are you fixing yeah. up the uh, ice for the hockey rink there, buddy? Trying to get my phone to set up properly. It's, like it's a still at work. Oh. Hey, it was a great show last night. Oh, thank you. Yeah, woohoo. I enjoyed the shit out of that one. Yeah, um, I, uh, it went I had by to pretty stop. quick. I had to stop making a remix to jump on here. I was in the middle of a rather raucous and loud three way <laughs> orgy between Leslie Stahl, Jeffrey Epstein, and Bill Gates all going, ah. Uh, at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm working on right now. I told Drizzle last night, eventually I'm going to make the uh, the Orgy remix. And I'm and I'm hot and horny right in the middle of it. But uh, put it on pause to join you good fellas here. Don't forget I am to so glad it's Friday. Don't forget <laughs> that. You have no idea how I'm going to unplug tomorrow. Don't forget to throw in the Bill Gates. And, and now he's dead. So, I mean, there's that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, have you heard the song yet, Rob? No, I haven't. Oh, it's um. Well, uh, actually, did I cut the remix? The, you published uh, something today. I don't know. Has uh, has YouTube taken it down already? Um, I, surprisingly, I to it was the egg. <laughs> uh, thus far, you YouTube is freaking out over my wired to the max really and i've already gotten three messages first it made it age restricted then it put this other thing on it now it's made it private even though it's not copyright or anything and the video for wired to the max is literally three people that are just dancing with all their clothes on they're yep. not drinking they're not doing drugs. I mean, the first chick is shopping in a fucking Walmart. The second chick is at a goddamn slot machine doing shit with her. The third guy at the end, he's fucking dancing in a club. How is that? My shit's like NC-17 triple X rated now, like for inappropriate conduct. And you have to register over 18. And I'm like, what in the absolute fuck? And all the lyrics say is wired to the max for two or three days. There's no profanity. It's not saying do drugs or I, I, again, I, I don't understand this algorithm. They 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 they, they pick on me, Drizzle. Well, of course they, they do. YouTube really, really fucking hates me, dude. And, well, and you so make you know yourself a target. I give them more you keep, you songs. keep doing it, all the stuff that they say is not allowed. Yeah. I mean, I keep doing I, it too, but that's but, why I well, do like it today. <laughs> like today, right? <clears throat> I go to, uh, excuse me. I go to, uh, upload the replay <laughs> from last night of just the show, right? Not the, not the hour of music beforehand, just the show where it's like all of our stuff. And anything that isn't is like Creative Commons. And they hit me with a, a copyright thing, not like a not like a strike or anything, but they're like, "Well, but this uh, this music in in here is copywritten, and the uh, the uh, I don't know, the author is going to be notified about it or something like that." And so I went and I dug into it and I looked up who it was they were saying the music was copywritten by. It is like some dude in Europe or something. For I'm like, well, this is clearly bullshit. So was I it, challenged The only it. song you played during the whole thing was yours. Was my song. And the ironic thing We played thing two was, of your songs. When you played Egg Shaped, <laughs> that was the first time it had ever been played ever because I had just put the stems together. I had never even heard the song. I was nervous as hell. We played it at the last 10 minutes of the show. Yeah, I don't know why you were so nervous. Well, because I had never heard it before. I mean, it, you why, know, you line up would, all the stems. And I don't understand and why that matters, though. 
Because right. oftentimes when I go to do the first playback on lining up the stems, I'll find out that when I get to the end of the song, some of the stems are not perfectly aligned and it just slowly over the song gets out of sync because I'm taking samples from five, six different songs and then rekeying them and then adjusting the tempo. And then when you adjust the tempo on that many tracks as fast as you fucking can, and then you go, you know, you obviously want to play it first before you just put it out there. But I, I knew it was going to be fire. So I was like, just fucking put it out there, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, if it's all just so a matter cool. of making sure that the levels are right stuff. Right. You know, and and I did check right before I told that's you. That's simple. You don't even have to oh, reference like, that stuff. Hang on. Let me check again. Okay. I, the whistles are lined up. Fuck it. Pull the trigger, Drizzle. Let's go. Little did I know. Playing like, when, that song when I'm remastering a track, you know, like I'll, I'll sample. Like I'll listen to a couple seconds here and there, but I don't listen to the whole damn thing. But that's an original song that I just fucking made and played on the air for the very first time ever. How is that already? It just a sounds inefficient strike? to me. That's all I'm saying. How is that already a copyright strike? I have no Jesus clue. Christ, I have no freaking clue, dude. What? What? And like I say, it wasn't technically a strike because they were like, you can still use it. It's allowed to be used, but I'm not even licensed. The, 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 what they were saying it was, it was not. And I was like, this this problem needs to be uh, like rectified or something. I don't know. I think YouTube is just erring on the side of caution because it's so different and unique that you must be trying to subvert the, the use. They I, can't I put their finger you, on it, so they're like, yeah. you know what? Let's just let's, let's just uh, let's just ban it. No, I think YouTube just hates us. Yeah, they they really think, really hate us, especially when we started matter, publishing Chris. shorts to the YouTube channel. They really yeah. started hating yeah. us because <laughs> then no we kidding. started getting more views. They, for whatever uh, reason, they have not figured out how to fine tune the shorts algorithm, and shit slips through. It catches fire too. Yeah. I know oh, because Yana. I read the comments. You know what I'm saying, you to Dozer? If the music yeah. fucking slaps and you can dance to that shit and nod your head to that shit, at first, you don't really pay attention to whoever's talking, whether it's David Icke or Carol Quigley or Leslie Stahl or Jeffrey Epstein or whoever is on the vocal. doesn't fucking matter. You're just dancing and vibing to the fucking music. But eventually, you start listening to this guy talking about connect the bloody dots and people faking their death and Nazis coming to South America. And you're like, holy shit. You know, I mean, that's the whole point. I'm, I'm trying to make the, the point is the music has to be good. And then I can put the icing with the little bobblehead Carol Quigley on that cake or whatever. And then plant those seeds. Infiltrate those minds. The Argentinian Olympic up. team sure has a name. <laughs> okay. Dude. Have you we heard do it about all what they're now. doing to Argentina? No, oh, wow. oh my God! Dude. Well, first of all, they looted the treasury. They sent all of the gold out of the country earlier this week, like literally earlier this week. There was gold in Argentina last week. It's not there anymore. I can tell you, Argentina is about to be the safest place on planet Earth because yeah. they are now going to be enforcing pre-crime. That's right. Thanks to the AI technocracy. Yeah. It's like that Minority is, Report, but it's real life. Is this going to yeah. be New, Is New Israel after that whole area yeah. gets turned to a sheet of glass? Yeah. yeah. What, New Gaza? I mean, New you, Gaza, to, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because yeah. it is Argentina, after all. It's well, it's actually going to be Gaza Heights population. Country Club. There'll be a Starbucks. I mean, next thing you know, they're building settlements in the settlements. 
seems like a pattern. I guess well, you train. Rob, that's why it's only a nine-hole course. You know what I'm saying? It'd be a full 18-hole, but it's only a nine-holer because, you know, they had to make room for more settlements. Well, they destroyed a bunch of farmland that's going to be hard to recover for many, 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 many years with all the spent uranium shell and all yep. that that they use. I saw some map of, like, the whole area that got decimated in Ukraine. It's like... Okay, so uh, Greg Dub says that I need more midget tranny strippers. Now, I can do strippers. I can do midgets. I can do midget strippers. What about tranny but, midgets? Uh, tranny is, is a bridge too far. And I, I've got a video <laughs> to make for a song called Blame Munition. Blamo! Um, Wow. And, that was loud. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, no, it's it. fine. It's good. No, don't don't adjust anything. It's perfect. It's it's wow. See, it was better like that, wasn't it? <laughs> this is great radio, isn't it? Um, but uh Blamo, I, I, I could stick some midget strippers in there, you know, if they're wearing the belly dancer costumes, because it's it's supposed to be about the Algerian uh, rebellion against the uh, French colonial powers uh, happened back in the 60s. It was um, it was fugly. It was a very fugly rebellion. Fucking ugly. Kind, kind yeah, of like those is, French Canadians. Fugly means. I have the, not uh, heard anybody yeah. use that word in probably a good couple decades. My yeah. God. You are from Northern Virginia, sir. That's right. You know, the Quebecers have done a lot of fugly things to the rest of Canada, which is have why... We, have we not shit enough on the French Canadians already? Not enough. Uh, not, not enough. <laughs> that, you know, that's why I can say for sure it's Bourget, Texas. I bet if we look on the history of the founding of Bourget, Texas, outside of Amarillo, that's about 15 miles northeast. Anyways, um, don't ever go there. Um, guarantee it was settled by fucking fake. I, watch I still it. I think it it's one of those fake state. CIA towns settled by that they use for like training purposes. Is that a mock-up panhandle town? Yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> that's why they still have their Bennigans. Yep. It's all right. Next time we'll just go through Midland, Odessa, hit the one in Monaghan. But not on the 4th of July. Yeah, it's one of those places where, like, when they do, uh, uh, you know, the they, like, snatch somebody from a, a foreign adversary or whatever and bring them over here. They stash them in a town like that because the whole town's controlled. They yeah. know they can't escape. It's like you're on the set of the Truman Show. Yeah. And they all have earpieces. <laughs> and they're actually lizard people. That's why they all eat mice. <laughs> I saw that on that NBC. It was what was it? V? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, V. It's all right. We got that red powder. We'll kill them all, you know. Doug. Yeah, the original was phenomenal. The remake, <laughs> not so much. How do you guys feel about the uh, the Communist Party USA um, inaugurating Kamala as their? Uh, they got enough delegates to make her the nominee. <laughs> Who the fuck voted again? Democracy. Yeah. Democracies are the ballot. Decency. Did that yeah. actually happen? The Communist uh, Party you know, endorsed her. You know, I, oh, I could. They told so me to go easily, downstairs. <laughs> I could so easily remix Kamala and have her doing the "Don't Communist." Yeah, I gotta jump Don't out communist. for a minute. Don't I'll ride. be back. Right. See you, buddy. Please. Don't communist. If you want a communist, don't communist. Well, this but is, how, how many people have communist in Kamala's mouth? Oh no! It's just I was, like when did when did president. we make it illegal to kill communists? When did that happen? I don't know. They made a big stink. Joe McCarthy uh, very corrupted. Wasn't really getting rid of the communists as much as he was just grandstanding like all these cocksuckers. I wonder what kind of Rosenberg uh, killed for being commies. Ethel and Rudy. Didn't, or what was it? 
Ethel and the other Sydney, or something like Ethel that. Sydney Ginsburg. Yeah, they were they were uh, killed for being communists for, for passing, spies. passing nuclear passing secrets. Nuclear. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Busted, Busted. caught red-handed. I don't think they changed. were necessarily commies. I think they were just opportunists. Who knows? I mean, well, they they they, they were, were probably Rosenbergs. Just, so you know. they were probably just well, as the, Bill Gates would say, well, they're well, dead. Uh, so in general, I guess you have to be careful. <laughs> that's right. Well, he's dead, so mm-hmm. uh, you know, in general, you always have to be yeah. careful. Some uh, somebody just released a new book about Bill Gates and his twisted life. I think about how uh, they had a policy at Microsoft not to let him be alone around any of the interns because he was. Uh, <laughs> That was that right. was a policy from legal. I guarantee. Yeah. You. Is it true that Bill Gates named Microsoft after his penis? Um, it was shaped like an egg. I'd heard. I don't know, but maybe I that was, that was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> I, mean, I thought Bill Gates was Microsoft. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I asked Melinda. She already left. <laughs> well, apparently, it all adds up. Bill Gates liked hitting on young girls. Jeffrey Epstein had a supply of young girls. And I'm sure Epstein's got a tape of Bill Gates somewhere with some underage girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that, uh, what was it? There was a, uh, like a a tennis player or something that, that uh, Bill Gates was, was like dating, I guess, at one point. Paying to be his girlfriend. Something like that. And I think she was, uh, I want to say she was underage when they first met. She was like 12 or 13 or something when they first met. And they, they, I, I think even to this day, they still correspond with one another, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember yeah, was, the woman's name, though. She was kind of cute. Yeah, that was uh, part of what I was reading. That was uh, one of those things that his ex-wife allowed him to do. Well. You mean Kevin Klein? <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Klein. <laughs> I, I, I love that fucking interview where they're talking about how they like to, you know, just stick it right in their arms. And, right, uh, just shoot it right in there. They, they, they both like give the little grin and look at each other like, man, that's some evil shit right there. The poisons and to pretend that they don't know. <laughs> I'm curious great. to know more about her family. French. Bill Gates was vaccine damaged. Yeah. Ever see that deposition when he was being hauled in for his monopolistic practices? Oh, that's not vaccine damage. That's fucking mortal terror. Uh, <laughs> that's what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, he was because they're 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 telling him like all the things that they can do to him, and he can't do anything about it, and he knows they're right. Well, I mean, that would make us, uh, you know, believe that he actually did develop this stuff all by himself. But of course, he better. didn't. <laughs> we all know better. Than of course, that. he didn't. But he had to suck Satan's cock in order to remain in charge of all of it and perpetuate the myth that we call Microsoft. Yeah, I guess. Could have been somebody else. Why did they have to pick some megalomaniac lunatic to run it? Because his his grandfather knew uh, Rockefeller. Yeah. And was in good with Rockefeller. That's why his family got picked. That's all it is. The only reason why the Bushes are there is because they're related to the fucking Windsors. (laughs) If it wasn't the Bushes, it'd be some other fucking Windsor relative. Yeah, it's funny how that all ties together the further back you look into history. Like Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution. All the uh, people who were financing that using the American International Corporation yep. as their uh, playground to try to uh, 
steal all the resources from Russia. This um, authoritarian strongman that they put in place. What was the uh, what was the building? Was it 120 Broadway? Yeah, 120 Broadway, yeah. where all these activities, guarantee trust company. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like some of the most powerful corporations in the world, all headquartered at the exact same fucking address. Okay. Yeah. All right. They sure. Tied, tied well, they all in each other. Yeah, tied in with all the names that you've heard through. You know, the, they try to pretend like they're just the boogeyman, but they really fucking were, man. <laughs> the Guggenheim trust and rockefeller jp morgan who was it i think it was i was listening to uh the uh geopolitics and empire podcast recent episode with parallel mike yeah and i, I like think, that guy yeah oh yeah yeah he's uh he's great to listen to because he's he's chock full of all sorts of uh interesting information uh, he's he's led a very interesting life, but he was he was talking about like the names of the families that we don't talk about anymore because they're not around anymore, really, like the Habsburgs or uh, the the Romanovs or um, shit. What was the, it? Uh, the Ho yeah. Hohenhoffers? Hohenhoffers. How about yeah. the Warburgs? Are they still around? The Warburgs are technically still around. They're just not. Um, I don't think they're the Warburgs anymore. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think. I don't know um, what they mean. Because I think James was the the last prominent male in finance, unless they just went completely underground, like the the Sassoons did. Yeah, well, the safest place to be is out of the public public uh, eye. You know, they throw all these people that we get angry at so that we have somebody to uh, direct our anger towards. Well, They're the fall guys. As long as they can show up at a stadium and yell at other people for not doing what they think is a good job. <laughs> yeah. they, you know, Mike, Mike mentioned something on that podcast that caught my ear was he was talking about all this energy that's being required to run the Panopticon. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, I think he hit the nail on the head. They want us to go green and they want us to lower our carbon footprint or whatever it may be so that they can uh, power all the, the uh, all the servers and server farms and stuff. And then I yeah. just read an article the other day that Absolutely. Microsoft – went up like twice as much in energy usage. So of course yeah. they're trying the to get us to help. four years, yeah. Microsoft yeah. doubled their energy usage. That is insane. Absolutely insane. What's yeah, the but you need to turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah, you need to turn the lights off. They don't have the uh, infrastructure and the power grid to power all this shit. So uh, either they put a lot of advancements in or they let us all go back to the stone ages. Cause she ain't going to last. No, the, it's, uh, it's the, the way, the way the demand for energy is going there. There is a zero point where once we reach that point, it's, it, it just won't work because there won't be enough energy input to sustain the system. It will collapse. I think they're trying to race to to get to or maybe they already have it. Like maybe that's that's you know what what causes the the true reset, right? Where now we get like the free energy machines and all that sort of stuff and the energy crisis goes away because they own all the patents on the free energy machines and we're just all dirt poor forever. Or we can make our own free energy device. <clears throat> Just don't tell anybody because they'll kill you. Right. That's that's the mistake everybody makes is they keep they keep telling people about it. They keep putting up fucking YouTube videos and shit. Just give it to like your neighbors. Give it to your family. Give it to your your friends that live in other states and tell them to do the same thing to the the people in their neighborhoods and shit. Don't put the Maybe. shit on YouTube. We live on a big spinning Christ, magnet, people, you so. got to be smarter than your enemy. <laughs> uh, going back to the uh, people that 
that aren't in the limelight or the 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 families that are are hidden uh ryan on the burn the court for fiction he talks about quite a few uh names of families that have been around for a long long time or zini that's one of them that i remember he he's he goes into that what podcast was that burn the corporate fiction uh it's oh. you know ryan you i found him through your uh grand theft world i actually texted you back and said you know great There's job a lot i mean of ryan's man <laughs> okay so ryan runs a he's he goes by the handle burn the corporate fiction and then his web his youtube channel is called um exposing the bar pirates that and then his dad familiar. his dad tunes in his dad is uh sovereign soul unchained and they do a podcast together sometimes and i actually have been i've actually That's called cool. in the last couple of weekends and talked with ryan nice that kid is a genius when it comes to research his ability to research and find source documents. And yeah, that guy blew my mind. And I found him through you and I haven't missed a podcast. In fact, I listened to every podcast that kid had done. He's only 36 years old and he's just a researching genius. Sounds like a Johnny Vedmore type. Yeah. I don't know. But then like Yona, Yona, ever since I watched that one uh, Grand Theft Grit Fact Harder where he went off about Socotra. Um, and then the the other day I asked about uh, the Amazon, you know, towards the end of one of your Grand Theft World Get Fact Harders, he went off on, on the explorers that ran around the Amazon and talked about Amazonian women and going down this river and then he split up. And it was at the end of the, of the podcast and I would love to find that podcast again. And then ever since then, now I'm reading books because of Yona. I've started <laughs> reading about uh, Cerveza de Vaca and Cortez and all those guys. So I wrote, ordered yeah, all these Cabeza, books. Cabeza de Vaca, yeah. Cerveza Cabeza de Vaca, yes. It means uh, head of the cow, cow head. Cabeza right. Uh, but yeah, yeah he, uh, it, I mean, the real history uh, of North America through colonization and really all of the Americas, there's such fascinating stories that have been so vigorously yep. memory hold and really just withheld from most people. And the stories are out there, particularly in Spanish. And, and that's what I discovered when I was on the faculty down there in Cuenca in Ecuador teaching English, um, you know, that um, in terms of scholarship and historical research, um, the, you know, the Latin Americans are all over La Conquista, whereas it's just deafening silence and just, albeit almost completely missing. I mean, I, the story of Cabeza de Vaca alone is just so fascinating to yep. me. And it takes place across Florida and Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas and Colorado and New Mexico and finally down into mm -hmm. Mexico proper. And yet there's, I couldn't find anything in English about him. It's all in Spanish. <laughs> and it happened in the Southern United States, you know. Yeah. And, all I know is that I read Conquering the Pacific, and I can tell you something. That Cortez guy, he had balls. Like, yeah. he literally had the balls. I mean, he wasn't supposed to do what he did. In fact, no. they sent in, like, a 1,000 men into into Mexico to go, go after him. Yeah. He basically took that over and went and conquered. And he basically built 12 ships, and they dug a canal, like, a, a mile and a half long, 12 feet wide, 12 feet deep. And they took those ships down that canal and basically laid siege to – whatever the city was, the Aztec Empire. Uh, uh, Tenochtitlan. Yeah. Yes. And that's how he took over that empire. Uh -huh. Fascinating stories. You know, I, I've well, told this story before. It, it, it's really sad because um, when uh, Moctezuma, chief of the Nahuatl, um, you know, the Mexica, uh, we call him Montezuma, you know, when he greeted Cortez you know first he shared with him the black drink and that was called Kohi and so uh, Cortez called it cafe or coffee 
And then the second drink he gave him was the brown drink that was kind of sweet. And that was called um, Chocolatel. Chocolatel. And he called that Chocolate. And that was made from the cacao bean. Cocoa bean. Right? And then then he passed him the fucking pipe. Cortez hit the pipe and was choking, choking his head off and coughing his head off. What the fuck is this called? Montezuma tells him, Mali Ha Huana. Grass that makes you high. Grass that <laughs> makes you drunk. Mali Ha Huana. So Cortez called it Marijuana. And then he killed Cortez. I mean, and then Cortez killed Montezuma. Because yeah. uh, uh, Montezuma introduced Cortez to his wife, who had that Latin ass and the big old titties. And <laughs> so, you know what? Tell you what, I'm going to kill you. Fuck your wife. <laughs> eat all your chocolate. Smoke all your weed. And I'm taking the coffee to go. See ya, asshole. That's how Get out of my down. house. <laughs> That's how it went down. It's kind of pretty good summation of history right there. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fucked up the way things went down there, Rob. Yeah, a little bit. Anyways, I just find that you, your uh, your uh, knowledge of geography and history just has really inspired me lately. Well, now so I, you have to remember that Cortez. I, I point out that the reason why the Brownists, the Pilgrims that landed, you know, at uh, Plymouth Rock or Patuxent. The hometown of Tisquantum or Squanto, you know, Squanto was there. He was one of the only indigenous Americans in all of the Americas that was fluent in fucking English and could obviously speak in Wampanoag and then, you know, um, translate between um, William Bradford and the rest of the uh, Miles Standish and the rest of the uh, uh, Mayflower Party. And and make treaties between the, the Sachems, you know, Metacomet and others. Same thing with the uh, Chesapeake Bay colony um, at Jamestown with uh, John Rolfe and John Smith. You know, they came in on the Susan Constant. Anyways, um, uh, the chief of the uh, Powhatan Confederacy, um, uh, Wehun Sanaka, or the ones we, the one we just call Powhatan. Um, his uh, younger brother, uh, Opechancano, he spoke fluent Spanish. So again, they were able to translate. Same thing when Cortez first landed at the Yucatan, not far from um, Cancun, in fact, uh, but more up toward um, Medina, up toward the very yeah. form of Yucatan. Yeah. And uh, there, he, uh, when he first landed, that's when he recovered uh, a Spanish survivor from a failed uh, party that had landed at the Yucatan some four years previous. Uh, and I think the only survivor was uh, the Pedro Aguilar. <laughs> and Aguilar, having been there for four years, was now fluent in Isio Maya. So now Cortez has someone that can translate between uh, Castellano and Maya, you know, um, Spanish and Mayan. Uh, well, then he gets down to, um, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the Strait of, uh, Te Tehuan Tepec, um, the, you know, where the, the narrow part of Mexico, where they actually have the, the transoceanic rail line, um, that we've talked about many times. Um, anyways, uh, there's a little island there called Tabasco. And that's where uh, La Malinche had been um, sold. Uh, she was basically bought as a wife uh, by Cortez. And uh, she had been taken prisoner and was basically trafficked as a sex slave because she was an Aztec and had been brought down to the mines there at Tabasco. Well, with Cortez taking her as basically his... Um, Oh, what's that fancy word, Nina Dozer? Sounds like combine. Concubine. 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 Yeah. Concubine. Yeah. That's the word. I was that thinking succubus, but then I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> I think 
But that's that's say, my experience in life. I want to say so. that La Malinche was only like 13 or 14 years old when she was Damn, married son. to Cortez. Uh, that's old enough, right? Old enough to bleed, I guess. Uh, yeah. Even back then. They're conquistadors. They conquered. They rape. They pillage. Yeah, I mean, have, you, to be I, fair, people are like, you know, men and women were getting married at like 13 and 14 years old. That is true. That is true. So but in, uh, in the words oh, of El Guapo, they take the women. Yes. Yes, yeah. they do, senor. I think the Portuguese were way worse. Based yeah. upon my study, they so, were like terrible. <laughs> so long story short, at this point now, Cortez then leaves the Mexican coastline again because Cortez got a ship, right? He lands on mm -hmm. the coast of Cancun, then lands on the coast at Merida, then lands on the coast at Tabasco, right there by the Strait of uh, Tehuantepec. And now he sails on up the, the, the Gulf Coast of Mexico on up to Veracruz. Except now on on his ship, he's got um, Senor um, Pedro Aguilar, who speaks Spokers. Spanish and Mayan. Yeah. And he's got La Malinche, who can speak Aztec and Mayan when she doesn't have a dick in her mouth. So between Aguilar and La Malinche, Cortez can now issue messages in Spanish, Mayan, and Aztec which allows him to then make alliances with the Pueblans and the Tlaxcalans and the other neighboring uh, First Nations to the Aztecs, whom the Aztecs had raped and pillaged on. And so by making friends with the enemies of the Aztecs, when yeah. Cortez marched into Tenochtitlan, he didn't dig that 12 by 12 canal. No. That was the Pueblans and the Tlaxcalans that yeah. took it. Because they yeah. all wanted to see the Aztecs fall because they hated being painted blue and marched to the top of the pyramid and having their hearts cut out. Well, yeah. I would not be very line. happy about that myself. Yeah. Just <laughs> well, for the record. Blue. had a lot of neighbors. I would probably be against that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't get political very often. But again, it was... The only reason why Cortez succeeded is because he could bridge the language gap. So without Squanto and the Mayflower Party, without Opechancano and the Powhatans, without Aguilar and La Malinche, none of these uh, conquerings would have happened. They just would have been killed or eaten, like Verrazano in Guadalupe. Very interesting and uh, crazy how uh, how the people who came over just slaughtered everybody. But sometimes oh, it didn't work out. I mean, it's amazing that the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, it's such a famous bridge connecting Staten Island and I think uh, the borough of uh, Brooklyn. Right, Brooklyn to Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is very. Or, or that may be Queens. That's so far down. I don't know. I think I, Queens I, on top, Brooklyn on bottom. I've never Who's been bottom there. Bitch, I just know bitch. I know New York City geography from the Beastie Boys. Right, hmm. so. but uh, yeah, as we reviewed previously, um, Verrazano was was eaten. There, there were cannibals in the in the Caribbean. Really? Yes. Oh, that's yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, because they were doing they were doing all sorts of in interesting shit. Without being an organized crime, <laughs> that's how you get your name on a bridge by getting eaten by cannibals. I'm gonna pass. So but when, they were when, civilized wait, cannibals. Mean, they don't eat the head; they shrink your head and keep it on a rope. Come right, on, right, right. but does that mean we're not gonna get the Francis <laughs> Scott Key Bridge? We're gonna get the Uncle Bosey Bridge? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. What about the George Floyd Bridge? I mean, no, been... no, no that don't do that, to Uncle Bozy. No. <laughs> too soon. Oh my gosh! Can't we name a bridge after that um, thing in the uh, uh, National Health Department? Uh, what, what's her name? The his name? Its name? Oh my God! 
that monster. Yeah. I know what you're crunch, talking about. Uh, and wears the full fucking uniform like. Looks so like grandma. <laughs> if you're going to pretend, I mean, fucking pretend away with your Captain Crunch outfit. Uh, Health and Human Services Director. Mm -hmm. That's who it is. I don't remember the name. I just remember, ah, every time I see that face, I'm like, ah! Oh my God, she is assistant what is that HHS, dude isn't she? To do? Oh, wow. He, it, they, them, whatever. What's it called? What's its name? You know, you, technically, I did see, uh, I saw this on uh, social media on the interwebs this week. That means it's true that in the Bible, demons refer to themselves as they, them. So that means we wow. can now we can now start calling they thems demons. Official. That sounds good. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. I'm down with that. Down with it. I tested down, the logic. I'm, I'm also it checks down out. for demon side. I, I, I'm I'm on the record for endorsing demon side. Well, See now that's a platform people can get behind. There's just too many damn demons and devils running around here. And uh Hell you is know, empty. They need to go back to hell. It's and either they, either they hell, hell is empty or we are in hell. It's just one a of mental those health two things. crisis. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. I mean, if people had to survive, you know, had to grow their own food, they would have time for this silliness. On behalf of Unidozer, hell is when you can only find North Carolina vinegar-based barbecue. <laughs> I don't know That's about the old sauce. Pussy. <laughs> Pussy. Get, just, get some mustard in your life, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and some honey. Oh, my God. They don't know. They don't know, but they can find out. It's called the Palmetto State. Get your ass down there and, and get some of that pulled pork with the gold sauce. Tell them Yona sent you. <laughs> You'll thank me. Best fucking barbecue you've had outside of Texas or Kansas City, I guarantee it. Them Carolina boys, they know how to hook how to cook some fucking hog meat, let me tell you. You guys ever heard of uh, Republic Broadcasting Network? It's a radio station on the internet. Yeah. They list, they have like anybody can have a show on there, I think. But there's a couple guys on there I've been following. One's guy goes by the handle Blackbird9. And okay. he used to work for um, the NSA up oh, until he finally, um, yeah, he got kicked out because he wanted to expose that they had like, they've been tapping all the phones and had all that equipment running prior to 9 11. And uh, he saw it, he knew it, and he tried to convince his coworkers to, you know, go on the record and be whistleblowers, and he lost. And but he's he's a he's got a really good show, and so does I get another guy by the name of Mike Gaddy. He's getting up there in age, but Mike Gaddy is probably the best uh, historian that I've found on the history of the United States, and really? in the right kind of history. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try and post some things in Grand Theft World. Um, now, some of these people really that I'm talking about doing um, historical research and uh, uh, I got to say one of the most prolific and I would I would highly recommend this prolific historian and uh, professor. Um, he was at LSU last I heard. I think he's in College Station, Texas at the uh, Texas Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Aggies. That's right. Oh, Shout I got so many. Aggies. I got yep. so many Aggie shithead jokes. But uh, I'm talking about Gerald Horn, H-O-R-N-E. Gerald Horn. And I mean, literally every time he speaks, every time he puts up another video, I'm all over that shit. That, I mean... It, just any interview, any content I can get from Gerald Horn. The guy is just on fire. Um, because the way he reminds me of Howard Zinn, the way he connects all these historical things through individuals and then gets into who was in their network. And, and you know, 
again, it reminds me of like Richard with the brain map where you see how these different people are connected through marriage or business partnership or co-ownership of a corporation or whatever, you know, these connections, these networks, Mm -hmm. because as we all know, and all that kind of shit, that's how the world actually works. Mm -hmm. It means, it means fuck all what, you know, the only thing that matters is who, you know, and who who they know. know, who, you know, and what kind of leverage you can create. Yeah. (laughs) What are you? Those are the only things that matter. (laughs) Yano, would you post the link to that when you get a chance, or I'll just I'll just telegram you. Uh, Gerald Horde. Yeah, and I'll 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 post those uh, two guys I just mentioned as well as well as Ryan. Uh, Blackbird Mike. Nine and uh, what was his name? Today? Mike Gaddy. Oh, Mike, Mike Gaddy. Gaddy. Yeah. Uh, let me go over here and put this. Let's just he's he's one of those historians that knows that the uh, second revolution in the United States was lost by the wrong side yeah 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 Yeah. well i mean if you if you actually look at it i think any any person viewing it objectively for themselves can kind of come to that conclusion Mm -hmm. then you look at all these people from the south that are pro-trump and he says that he wants to bring back the greatness of lincoln (laughs) which is ironic if you think about it Lincoln threw people in camps. I don't know if people yep. understand that. Lincoln was not a friend of the Constitution or constitutionalist. Name me no. any other sitting American president that killed more American citizens during his term than Abraham Lincoln. FJR or FDR? World War Two. Did we lose Maybe. more Ameri- did we lose more Americans know. in World War II? I don't know. The Civil War? I don't know. So. Those are your only two options I can well, think let's of. Let's find out. I don't think so. The great I thing mean, is we have this thing called the internet. Well, what Matt no. Gaddy taught me was is that in eighteen forty eight you had all these communist revolutions going on in Europe. And they yep. they were somewhat successful, but they failed. Well, where did yep. all those people go? And where did they the, start another party? They went in the United to the States called the Republican Party. They went. Yeah, they came here and yeah. they created the Republican Party, which Lincoln was a yeah. Republican. The first Republican candidate. Yes. So that's where your communism came from. And you know, the good news is, uh, unlike a lot of other political campaigns, would it came Holy to Lincoln? Cow. Wow. I'm sorry. Way more people <laughs> died in the Civil War than World War II. Yeah, well, I was just America. about to oh, say, boy. I've got the numbers yeah. in front of me now. Okay. U.S. And casualties for World War II, uh, apparently they have a total number of 405,399, yeah. whereas yeah. for the U.S. Civil War, total casualties are estimated to be around 1.5 million. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I think you can double that. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Okay, think about so, uh, it. When, I, when the first census, the first U.S. census was done back in, like, what, 1780 or something like that, the United States had 3.9 million people total, including slaves. In the oh. colonies. Because that in was. Be- total. In eight, oh. 1780. Okay. Yeah. Why were they doing a census during the... That was during wartime, wasn't it? Well, we do a census during wartime now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes it official. There's only been like 17 years of its existence. The United States hasn't been at war. So, uh, it's official. Abraham Lincoln killed more American (laughs) citizens than any other president in history. It's not even close. He was the Stalin of his time. So far. But what I was getting to was... (laughs) That's right, Rob. As Lincoln launched his campaign and the Republican Party upon his shoulders, there was infamous debates all across the state of Illinois and also some in Indiana and Michigan and Ohio and Wisconsin and Iowa. 
But uh, you know, across the Midwest, um, the infamous Lincoln Douglas debates, where Stephen Douglas uh, debated Abraham Lincoln, um, and these are well documented. You, you can, I, I've read, I read through the entire four or five volumes at once, um, a long time ago. But the the ironic thing about the Lincoln Douglas debates is. Um, Lincoln was absolutely racist and viewed the Ethiopian races as an inferior breed of human. And, you know, um, and it's just weird now looking at how Lincoln is described as honest Abe when he was known as swindling people, whether in land surveying deals and Illinois and Springfield or other things, you know, but nonetheless, he's been rebranded as honest Abe. The great emancipator. <laughs> I have completely, totally just warped. And the, the way the Civil War and Reconstruction period is spoken about now is just so unbelievably. It, 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 every year, it just gets worse like i can't find anything talking about the rutherford b hayes and teapot dome or you know getting into the posse commentators um you know uh compromise that was worked out so like that, Andrew jackson marching the truth down um, yeah there's not much about that <laughs> well when you when you get your history from a textbook a public fool or an expert you're being deceived. Yeah. My daddy taught me that one, and he's absolutely right. Well, as a cruel twist of um, irony, I don't know if it's irony or what it is, or just a show of their power, Andrew Jackson took down the uh, the National Bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now he's on the $20 bill for eternity. Yeah, I think that's despite him. I think so, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know what the hell was up his ass when it came to the banks. Not that I fault him for it at all. I mean, Jefferson there, there said the plenty... same thing about the banks. Well, yeah, but there there are plenty of other things you can fault Andrew Jackson for. He was not what I would call a pleasant man. There's a reason they called him Old Hickory. The mm -hmm. grossest thing had to be the two Chickasaw boys that he adopted. Um, they were like six and eight years old when he adopted them um and i think they both ended up committing suicide i mean he he molested them for years and years and years and years and then when they got away they uh, hung themselves or whatever i don't know or maybe he had them mm. killed. i don't know it just you know it turns out the whole like satan worshiping and kid fucking and stuff like that with the elites They've been doing the same fucking shit generation after generation after generation after generation. And I mean, it's, I mean, I, I guess now that the, the cat's sort it of out It produces predictable results Yeah, when it comes to human behavior. They've learned a, a process for programming people before they even yeah. understood what cybernetics actually was. Like that's you, that's uh, honestly the only way I can explain it. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the picture of the new prime minister of England? There's a picture floating around with, with um, who was that pedophile that was friends with the king? He, Jimmy he was Sabble. a comedian. Jimmy yeah. Sabble. Okay, so Jimmy Sabble. There's a picture of the new prime minister as a young boy with Jimmy Savile has his hands on his shoulders and he's kind of leaning over him, smiling, and that kind of taught told me everything I wanted to know about this well, new prime that minister in England. explains how he ended up as the queer stormer. Yeah. I think but dude, he's, he's already trying to increase the surveillance in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, so well, they don't have enough. After we, after and you know, uh, uh, queer stormer is actually more pro-Zionist than like, Ron DeSantis. Problem, reaction, solution. Yeah. Oh, yep, dude, they're... Hungarian. Seriously. Like, could there be any clearer example? I was, I couldn't, I couldn't actually believe when I was watching the video a couple days ago. I was like, 
This is so in your face obvious. How can people not see it? But yeah, the, the techno fascist state advanced this week. Anybody notice that? It's always incrementally yeah. moving forward. I'm with Mike on parallel podcast. I mean, it, they can't sustain it. I mean, it has to fall eventually. The only way I can I figure know. they can sustain it is, like I said, if they already have free energy figured out. So, the, like, the whole energy inputs problem is already solved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if they they have solved it, they're not they're not um, they're not sharing showing it. us that. Yeah, no. And they're, and they're probably however, not going to do that. However, one thing that I find interesting is how they can contain so much data. Now they're saying that all these server farms are control, you know, have all this data, and that's where all the power is going to maintain all that data and all that information. I mean, remember when we used to be fighting with megabytes, and then we went to gigabytes? Well, it seems to me that they have unlimited storage nowadays. Well, it, storage so it, advances at the same rate that uh, computation does, essentially. Hmm. So, I mean, we're we're to the point now where we can create unlimited storage essentially Moore's law of computing yeah 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 that's it but the thing is you still have to create databases you still have to create server farms you still have to have a physical place to put that stuff and you still have to have energy to run it and you still have to have people to fix the stuff that breaks Sounds like we're close to that whole matrix type thing where they're, you know, gather humans and sucking the energy out of them. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, one of the most uh, elemental layers of any type of uh, robotics or AI or anything that's going on comes down to your global positioning systems, which rely upon geographic information systems, which is basically all of the map data that's been digitized as well as any uh, relevant um, 3D scanning, topography or tomography or anything else that they have to try to make 3D models that they can then manipulate, uh, you know, whatever type of robot or craft they have within this 3D model scape, uh, relying upon GPS for XYZ coordinate relative to the landscape and road network and such as they've been able to input from scanning you know, previous paper or digital maps, as well as, uh, again, whatever LIDAR or other databases they may have. But well, in real that world being measurements said, too. Uh, being a land surveyor by trade and having worked in GIS and GPS my whole life, um, you know, um, shout out to Joe Piva at uh, Trimble Navigation Systems. That's who I got my professional training in how to uh, interpret ephemeris data and, you know, figure out the bird constellation, you know, satellite constellations and my ephemeris data for, you know, good uh, data reception angles, you know, running um, four track uh, dual band uh, real time kinematic GPS receivers. So I, I can get real deep in the weeds with using the my survey you? grade oh, fucking that. accuracy shit. Um, but uh, the point being, most I know, I know the, what he's talking about. Most of the 3D models, most of the maps, most of the digital stuff they have. He gave it away with ephemeris data. Out of date, just doesn't. I mean, it's it's just full of fucking mistakes. And then when you go to collect GPS positional data, if you don't take into account the ephemeris data and do your... Um, you know, there, there's going to be ideal times to get positional fix, depending upon where the satellites are for doing your triangulation. It, well, isn't it that why GLONASS was supposed to be a superior system? Well, yeah, you yeah. You didn't have to wait for the satellites to get into position? Right, right. Well, you know, and, and in terms but of... But we got the, GPS. The, the issue is with... <laughs> Lorraine. Survey, the, the, the issue that I confront is with survey grade precision of determination of X, Y, Z. So when I'm getting my lat long and elevation above mean sea level, you know, for most people with a handheld Garmin or whatever, you know, 
if they can get sub meter, that's good enough. So they're within three feet of the true X, Y, and Z. But for me, um, you know, typically I'm looking for a horizontal accuracy of, you know, plus or minus maybe three millimeters at the most and a vertical precision of about double that, maybe six mils. Um, and so in order to get that type of precision, used to be we would have to occupy that uh, point on the ground. And typically I would have three receivers on tripods set up at the periphery of my job site so that I could triangulate on the ground with vectors on the ground while I'm triangulating with birds overhead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I would have to occupy the site initially beginning in the 90s three to four hours uh but then we upgraded to uh uh dual track receivers that could get data from both u.s gps satellites as well as the russian and european fleet with glonass and with that i could get survey precision data in about 20 minutes Yo, is this some hours. kind of sneaky advertising going on here? <laughs> the but, fuck are you talking about? <laughs> um, you know, basically setting the tripod up and pushing a button and waiting for numbers to come on the screen to tell you what is your location on planet Earth, latitude, Man. longitude, and elevation. It's basically what we're talking about. People got soft in the old survey, and man, I remember taking a transit and a fucking pole out there and shooting elevations. <laughs> Well, uh, I think you I'm need to go back to the oldest, the oldest survey marker in the United States that you found the other day. Yeah, yeah, that that that, that, was, that was a good story. That was such that? an exhilarating rush to find that. Did you hear about that, you guys? Wrong. Yeah. Wow. Yona says that he found the oldest survey marker in the United States. Well, it's is, uh, is that correct? Is that how I remember yeah. the story? The, the 1785 first public land survey that was commissioned mm -hmm. by Surveyor of the United States. Um, and uh, his name is slipping my mind at the moment, but he began at the mouth of Little Beaver Creek on Ohio River, which is about 10 miles south of the Norfolk Southern um, Dioxin Festival in East Palestine, Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, on the Pennsylvania border there. Um, you know, East Palestine. Where they had the Why does that sound familiar? East Palestine, Norfolk Southern train derailment. Yeah, release of dioxin and human history. BBC. Um, but uh, the mouth of where it, it because you have uh, Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania all meet on the Ohio River, and right at that point is the mouth of Beaver Creek. And so they use that as the beginning point to run the terminus line and to survey off the first seven ranges. And that's the first public land survey. And the end of the line, when he reached the, the actually it was, he, he did five by five, 25 townships, five miles square. So at the end of the five mile traverse, he set the terminus stone in 1785. And I found it, and it's still there, undisturbed. But I mean, it's like a four foot long stone that's about 12 inches by 14 inches square, and only about 10 inches protrudes above the surface of the ground. The rest of the entire stone is buried. Was it marked in any way? Um, well, it had the, uh, there was a USGS marker next to it. Um, okay. that it's fallen down because of course it's a township corner and a section corner and obviously a property corner and a county line corner <laughs> i mean it's the oldest fucking stone and from a but that's from a u.s public land survey that's the first mm -hmm. commission survey by the government of the united states and you know subsequently virtually all of the western states were surveyed off by government surveyors using the public land system but that was the first public land survey prior to that everything is uh, meets and bounds colonial surveys so there are cornerstones that are older than that that i have found but 
they were set by county surveyors. That was the first stone set by the surveyor of the United States of America. A position that was only held had, by him. What they do when they had the Homestead Act and people were just going out and staking their claim on shit? That's, like, that, well, they had them line up on the state line with their wagon. <laughs> and they couldn't go and stake the claim until the surveyors were done. Hmm. And then they could go and claim, well, I'm going to claim the northeast quarter of the southeast quarter of Section 2, Township 15, Range 5 North. Be Put my name on the map. There you go. You see if, um, and that's 40 know, acres, by the way. Do you need a meal? Anyway. I'm sorry. Well, I think the most important stones are the ones that make up the 10 square miles of the district of criminals. Ooh. I think we need to just fence that whole area in. Yeah, they tried. Didn't they do that back in 2020? <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I, at this left point, I have while. to take... We, like, we should have left it like that. <laughs> I take tremendous pleasure and a tad bit of glee in saying that my birth state the Old Dominion, managed to get all of the Virginia Territory back from the District of Criminals that Pierre L'Enfant had annexed into the nation's capital because at one time, the Potomac River ran through the middle of the District of Criminals. But during the Civil War, when Richmond uh, seceded from the Union, uh, as a result, uh, in order for Lincoln to not have slave owners owning slaves yep. in the district of criminals, the first thing he did was give back the part of D.C. that was on the Virginia side of the Potomac. Then for the remaining slave owners within the district of criminals, Lincoln actually bought their freedom from the slave owners, and then the federal government paid those D.C. slave owners reparations for the lost profits yep. from the slaves that they were forced to sell to the government. That way Lincoln could say D.C. was a free city. But yep. that's what he had to do. And as a result, Virginia got back all of their land that used to be part of Washington, D.C. Well, I got like 5% on my phone. I'm going to bug out. It's time to go home. But you guys, I was nice talking with you guys. All right. Later. Yeah, thanks for hopping in. Just when I got the name plates done. Oh, well. <clears throat> so when you plates, I, I got my custom license plate today. I'm ready to rock and roll now. So what's your prediction for the next thing? The next thing? Yeah. Uh, nuclear bomb? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Seems like they're really, really... Well, like... they got... they Man. So they got this, this robot that they're going to unveil. <clears throat> on Don't you guys um, sleep on Turkey going jumping in to Lebanon and Turkey fighting it out with it? Nah. Shit's about that. Nah, I don't see like that. Like Tayyip nah. Erdogan, Recep... Uh, whatever his name is there, the new Ottoman prince. Um, I don't think they're going to let that happen. So the Turks have nukes or just our nukes in their land? <laughs> the Turks kind of do whatever the fuck they want. The Turks have been on some Cartman type energy lately, man. I mean, they, they, uh, they were, I mean, they, they keep doing business with Russia and China. They, they told Russia and China and the United, United States. States to fuck off. Um, they're kind of, I, I don't know. It's, it's, Turkey's a little, wild card to me. Still a little bitter about Operation Gladio. <laughs> yeah. If we're playing Uno, Turkey's the draw four card. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look at the IDF was about to just go plowing into Lebanon. And Erdogan said, if Israel invades Lebanon, we're then ground we're ground invading ground. Israel. All gloves are coming off. It's not like they literally been shelling five Lebanon. Later. Right, but five minutes later, okay, the IDF's not going to go rushing in to occupy all of Lebanon. This is like some evangelical's fucking wet dream here. 
It's the Armageddon. It's all part of the greater Israel project. Armageddon in the Holy Land, just like everybody's God wanted, I guess. That's just the show for the people, man. That's for the profane. Israel oh. and the United States are tied at the hip I've on seen, this uh, modern Satan. crusade. I've seen Satan showing his balls really often in the last, uh, I don't know, couple of years. It's gotten more and more in your face. Yeah, and apparently Satan likes blue lingerie when he's dancing at the Paris Olympic Games. Is that balls so? Out. Oh. I mean, balls out. Remember when they had the Last Supper table up there with the with the with the drag queen disciples, uh, and yeah, then you with had Gorlock the Destroyer as Jesus. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. that's right with Gorlock. And then you've got fucking blue lingerie <laughs> with the blonde beard with the balls just swinging out. Dude. Sorry, that that was a pop culture reference, Rob. I don't know if you got that one. Gorlock <laughs> the Destroyer. Yeah. Is that like Guardians of the Galaxy or something? <laughs> no, it's this big fat chick. Oh yeah. She's she's famous for being a big fat chick, and she got the name Gorlock the Destroyer. <laughs> so there's like when I invoke that name, there's a specific image that should come to mind. I try to stay out of the pop culture, so <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm yeah. telling you, when Gorlock the Destroyer walks into the subway, the manager turns around to the two guys in the back room and says, "Breaks over." Breaks over. <laughs> Breaks over. You're like, God damn, how many footlongers is this bitch going to order? And it's all for her. Eight foot long. Who the fuck orders eight foot long? So it's New York long. City has been cracking down on illegal cannabis shops. You heard about that, Rob? I, I have not, but the last few times I was up there, they hadn't even, you know, sanctioned any cannabis stores. And there was like every bodega that you would walk past would have something hidden under the counter. <laughs> Some of them were blatant with it have like packages of stuff up on the wall. And I guess they just were leaving people alone. They got well, better Apparently, they're not leaving people alone anymore. Well, I guess they try to get their revenue. Yeah. Uh, According to the Office of New York City Government, Mayor Adams announces 75 illegal smoke and cannabis shops ordered closed, nearly $6 million in penalties, and over 3,800 counts of violations issued during the first week of Operation Padlock to Protect. And that was back in May. Wow. Well, there's your hip-hop mayor keeping it hip-hop. That's how the mafia works, man. You start moving in on their freaking money, and they come and quickly shut you down. I, I definitely have to shout out the uh, uh, the flower bowl up on um, Fort Street in downtown fucking Detroit, Michigan, right there at the base of the Ambassador Bridge to Canada. Um, some fine quality weeds here uh, and cheap as fuck. Cheap as absolute fuck. Cheaper as cheap as Pueblo. Pueblo? Cheaper. Really? That's yeah, an ounce for 40 bucks. Wow. wow. I, I had to pay $50 for the ounce in Pueblo. They only <laughs> charge 40 Well, that's because you, you got a special deal on that ounce, wasn't it? It's like buy three, get one or something like that. Yeah, well, uh, well, plus, uh, you know, where I, I got the $40 ounce, it was normally like 60 bogo, but I, I got the, buy a half, the get a time. half. All these places you go to, if it's your first time shopping there, you know, they always <laughs> get some kind of discount or God forbid they want to give you one of their free uh, pre-rolls. Don't pat, skip on the free pre-roll, bro. You own a pro tip. Those pre-rolls ain't worth a fuck. They run like a bitch. <laughs> as soon as you light it, it just burns a stripe right down the whole side. 
I got some in Colorado um, in Denver that were like infused ones that burned super smooth. But I paid for them. They weren't free with purchase. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, eventually, I don't know whether it's going to be days or weeks, but apparently we're going to have recreational dispensaries here in Ohio. You hear that, Virginia? I'm surprised people aren't just setting up shop. I mean, fuck it. If they're going to drag their ass on, on actually getting some sort of like structure into place, this is America, well, people. That's what they there's, did. In there's years. a void in the market. Go and fill it. I mean, it's possible. Don't ask for permission. Ask for forgiveness afterwards. And you'll probably have to pay some money, too. Theoretically, Be prepared it's possible for that. that at some of these local head shops that could theoretically already be happening. But how would I know? I've always got my own. It's best to grow it. And you know, like when I go in the head shop and they smell me before I ever even open the door, they don't ask me if I need weed. I mean, you can fucking smell... Do, do I smell like I need more weed? God damn. I mean, you're going to have to hit, <laughs> hit the spray can when I walk out of here to get rid of my smell. It's a loaded uh, question. <laughs> I'll always take more weed. Yeah. You got weed? What do you got? Yeah, there's never... Uh... I don't have any of that yet. I'll take some of that. Ooh, ooh I got to get this other shit out. It's time to go to the Skittles Jack. Skittles Jack, huh? Oh, yeah. Are you looking to taste the rainbow? Taste the rainbow. Shout out Death to Tyrants who loves to taste the rainbow. <laughs> you know, speaking of whisper voices, I am not going to miss the Joe Biden whisper voice. Oh, my You're God. You're not going to miss that. When oh, guys, my God. When you guys think they're going to retire the old man for good and not send out some replica. Yeah, I was trying to get to the bottom of that last week, and nobody they, wanted. They to talk already about have it. said they're on. There are he, seventeen clones now, dude. Is he Kang or Kodos? I mean, I, <laughs> I think he might already be dead. He's already dead. Did you see the latest clone, Clone Fifteen, the one we call Stretch? Stretch, yeah. yeah. God, there's no way that was Joe Biden. No. Mm -mm. The way that, that guy was moved. taller than Lurch off the ass. No. Joe God. Biden has never been that tall in his no. life, ever. Not standing on a stack of phone books. Part no of the way. show. The emperor has clothes, and you guys are just fucking crazy. It's it's <laughs> so it's so like ludicrous the stuff that they do. It's just one insult after another if you're paying attention to it. Yeah, yeah. And and week by week it gets a little bit more absurd. Just a little bit. But the script. Because I mean, think about, would they have been able to get away with uh, fucking Michael Jordan-sized Joe Biden back in, in 2022? <laughs> no fucking way. No way that would have flown. Now? Sure. Yeah, I... I've seen those videos of that uh, ex-CIA master disguise woman in the plastic mask that they were making back then. And she's like, I can't even imagine the technology they have now. But I can't. You can. She's still, you know, apparently got her top secret clearance and until she dies. So Don't be so naive, Kate. Don't be so naive. Yeah, Ooh. so maybe that's why he had like the ball sack chin and like you know yeah. different different variations, ears, just bad fucking plastic. I don't know. That that would explain the variations on the ears. Yeah, Rob, you have my because it's not like your your earlobes constantly attach and detach. That's like a permanent. I, I, I give you my solemn thing. word, Rob. No matter how crazy shit gets, I will never stoop to the level of remixing Bruce Springsteen and the Street. <laughs> oh, thank you, Yona. <laughs> I appreciate that. If nobody not else yet. does, not gonna happen. Yes, hey, hey, fuck that. Bruce asshole. ain't the boss of me. 
Fuck you, Springsteen. You <laughs> like that? He's an amateur. Now, Jim Croce, that's a professional. Jim Croce. He's got a lot of whiny songs. His, his operator song. It's like, you got cucked, dude. Now you're fucking calling the operator and crying about it. He just wants to talk to somebody, man. Yeah, I bro. guess. How about, how about you, operator? Bro, you got that You got that 66, big 400 block, four banger fucking muscle car. And you're banging that Jim Croce in the motherfucking <laughs> tape deck. Dude, Pussy how many children deep. today even know what an operator is? Uh, very good question. I don't think anybody. When's the last operator, time? Operator, can you connect operator? me to? <laughs> when's the last time you dialed zero to talk to an operator? <laughs> That's a good question. Can you even do that on a cell phone? I can't say I've tried. Can they fucking even man the operator station anymore? <laughs> I think you can only reach the operator if you have a rotary cell phone. I can't even talk to a person when I call some place I'm trying to do business with. At least and believe it or not, that is actually level. a thing. There's a, a, a girl, a woman, I should say, up in Rhode Island or Massachusetts. I don't know. One of those places where they don't pronounce their Oz. Um, anyways, she actually ma manufactures rotary cell phones. Apps are kind of tricky with it. Yeah, yeah. A fucking rotary. What the <laughs> fuck could that even do for you? Like, why? Frustrate you? <laughs> like, seriously, why? She makes candles and rotary cell phones, and God bless that woman. Does she live in a tiny house? Yes. Does she have a cat? And and, so and it's right yeah. overlooking where the fishermen dock, right? Because it's New England. I'm sure it's cute. Yeah. Well, all it, right. and and it, and they're so. all you only get one color, and it's this weird, like pistachio green color. Because it matches the color of her car. Do you want a rotary cell phone or not? You take what you can get, buddy. <laughs> And fuck trying to do apps on that. Get a different phone for your yeah. pro tip. Well, one of <laughs> one of the uh, listeners in our audience tonight. Back to the the New York City crackdown on uh, unauthorized cannabis shops. Oh, Goodness, no. I'm, I, it makes me want to clutch my pearls just thinking about it. Um, uh, I'll one of our listeners. I'll refer to him as as ten eighty. Right, because 1080 is HD. He says that one of the stores in my neighborhood got busted, yet some others remain. That's because the others that remain hey, are the ones it. that Deuce. went through the proper channel and greased the right palms in order to not be a part of the crackdown. That's how that works. Um, in Italian, the, the word of the night, uh, our, your Italian word of the night is pizzo. That's P-I-Z-Z-O. Don't confuse that with the other word you're thinking of, pizza, pizza. with an A, oh. P-I-Z-Z-A. Okay, if you have a shop where you, you sell pizza in Joyzy, when Guido shows up, you give the pizza to Guido so you can sell pizza for the next week. Because if Guido don't get the pizza, you ain't making no fucking pizza. And that's why Guido has a baseball bat. It's a nice store with nice glass windows he got here. It'd be terrible if something bad happened to it. Where's my fucking money, bitch? That's how it goes. That's how it works. Pay a, lot the pizza of, a lot of big rocks no more pizza. play around here. I'll even type it out there. P I Z Z O. There was a. Um, that is a payoff money. I'm pretty There's discreet it. about it. I mean, I've never seen anybody in the city going in and shaking somebody down for protection money. Oh. But I'm sure it's still out there. Oh, yeah. It still happens. A little more discreet. Pizza. 
you're, 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 the pizza literally is, it, it, it refers to like a tip of the hat. You're showing respect to the Godfather. And if, if you don't, oh, so it's like pizza, kissing the ring. Yeah. And if you yeah. don't pay the pizza, you're basically telling the Godfather, go fuck yourself. And Godfather don't like it when people tell them to fuck off. Sounds like a bad career move, really. Yeah. Yeah. Guido will come back. He knows where you're doing business. Some decisions are permanent. <laughs> yeah. Just Bravado. be aware of that. Bravado, at least so far. Yeah. You pay the money, and what do you know? All your competitors got busted, and you're still in business. There you go. That's how it works. Yeah, there was one that uh, I know of because I'd been up in Brooklyn, and the place, they didn't have a legal license. They had filled out the paperwork to do it legally, but they hadn't been granted a license, and they were selling shit. That's fine. They're just engaging in free enterprise. What's wrong with that? Yeah. That was like when I had to get my visa in Ecuador in order to be able to work. And they were like, oh, well, you didn't get this document and you don't have this other thing either. It's like, oh, well, what do I do now? He's like, well, how much cash you got on you? I don't know. About three, four hundred right now, I think. Oh. That'll work. I, I, 200 will do, I think. We'll try 200. Here, give me 200 bucks. Goes up there. He's in there for like 20 minutes. I'm sweating bullets. I'm like, fuck, man. I guess I'm going to. So much for being an expat. Comes out of there. Here's your passport. Oh, wow. It's done. Yep. But I didn't have the seal or the dub. Shut the fuck up. Let's go. You're good. It's good oh, I, like that, I guess. Wow. You know, sometimes that's not the way I got treated at the embassy. Sometimes corruption is They're like, good. what you know, the you, fuck you, are you doing here? Get the fuck out. I mean, like, like even the story. Then with the bitch Jeff starts Berwick. blowing up my phone twenty four hours later. Right, right. Jeff Berwick uh, gets thrown in jail. They for, think I've forgotten it, about um, that. I haven't forgotten. Yeah, Berwick got thrown in the Mexican jail for fighting the Mexican, for punching the Mexican cop. Still on my phone, too. But Berwick got out of jail for punching the Mexican cop because you can, you just grease the right hand. You you pay the right That's dude. Mexico. You can do that yeah. in Mexico. You can punch yeah. cop. <laughs> yeah, Without you can punch cop in Mexico. You can buy your way out of it, too. Yeah. Yeah, for real. It works. Probably kill one if you got Berwick has done it. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that Berwick has done it multiple times because I've heard other people tell the exact same story. <laughs> Funny story. Um, when when I made the, the music video for Egg Shaped, where I used the footage from Luke Radowski and Jeff Berwick, um, you know, I, right before I went to upload the video, I noticed I had a couple spots where it showed Jeff talking. I was like, I don't want people to think that Jeff is like Jeffrey Epstein Shit. on this video. So, like, I ended up taking Jeff out of the video because I really didn't want people to think that, oh, my God, that's Jeffrey Epstein, right? There. No, no, that's not Jeffrey Epstein. That That's Jeffrey Berwick. That, different, different Jeff. Jeff. Different, different Jeff. Different Jeff. You yeah. know what? I'm going to re remove the confusion and I'll just find, well, I'll just re-edit it. I'll just edit out the video of, yeah, there you Ever, go. Yeah. Problem solved. And now there's, yeah. Problem solved. Now the only no people more. that know are the ones who've like watched that a million times and know exactly which video it is. They're like, but wow, it's really weird that there. Jeff Berwick's not in this. Berwick had a falling out with Luke right mm. after that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Hmm. But I mean, I, I give him. He credit. also had some interesting things to say about Luke's trip to Mar-a-Lago too on Twitter. Uh -huh. It was very public and, yeah. and humorous, if I might say. I mean, he had to go down there and uh, grease the ball. I was amused by. Be... You know, I, I, I did. I did give credit where it's due. I credited Luke and Jeff on the intro, and you can hear their audio very clearly. I just didn't want to flash. Um, Jeff's mug on there. I just I don't want people to get confused. Because, I mean, 
in some ways because yeah anyway that's that's why i did that well uh, he's dead uh there's that yeah so in general i i guess you have to be careful <laughs> <laughs> please tell me somebody clipped that let's see all right one hour 44 minutes i write that down that's going on the soundboard <laughs> I was that was good enough to go on the soundboard. They I might guess. have Yona talking in the background, but we can deal with that. As there's ways I can work magic with audio, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you can separate out different voices. It can be done. It can be done. Let's go over here to Discord. That was just yeah. like a, a perfect Homer Simpson burp. Do you think that um, this is really the fucking real deal with Iran this time? Or just more of it's the all, same? Oh, of what? Going to war? Hey, we're... Uh, yes, I mean, all no. Fun. It doesn't really fucking matter, does it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it matters. I mean, the, you know, selling weapons is the only thing that's going to keep the economy going if the narco dollar goes away. <laughs> so... What are you gonna do? Well, but they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna peg uh, the dollar to Bitcoin somehow miraculously. That's that's gonna be the solution. I don't know if that's gonna be the final solution, but that's going to be one of the solutions. Um, so, and Bitcoin is is actually going to act as a reserve corn currency for a majority of. Uh, nations across the world and Sisyphus you're uh, I don't know if you mean to have your camera turned off or not but your camera is turned it's turned on or it's turned off I, I don't know we're getting a black screen okay uh, oh but we're hearing you loud and clear and that, that's what's important okay it's good how's it going it's going good. how you doing Good, good, good. Uh, catching the last uh, 15 minutes of the show. I apologize for coming in this late. We had another event. That's all good. I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, I just see Bubby uh, hop in there, too. Howdy, Bubby. RBL. So hey, dog. Oh, shit. We're getting stoned for 15 minutes. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Back up a freshman. Unfortunately, I'm really, really high, so I'm not going to create nameplates for either one of you. And, You're and just you know have what? To suffer. You know what pairs with awesome West Virginia weeds? Fresh, homemade pepperoni rolls. Yins don't even know. Oh, Any. I know. I yeah. freak them though. I put like a garlic butter glaze on yeah. them, bitches. Yeah, yeah. It's an instant recipe for indigestion. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. It actually yeah. is. It yeah. actually is. But it's so up with fucking stomach good. acid in your mouth. <laughs> I, bro, you just put the Pepto Bismol right in there, and it's fine. You're good. Oh, it's great, man! You get all the pepperonis lined up, and if you make the dough just right, you can drink the fucking orange pepperoni grease out of the corner of it before you uh. take the first bite. Yum 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 yum. Bro, the pepperoni rolls in school were like this fucking big. They were like a little bread loaf. Yeah. And the bottom yeah. would have that grease baked into the bread. Oh, oh it's man. crispy. Where it's oh. like crunchy and crispy and oh my God. And it's it's this school lunch in like the eighties and nineties. And they'd give you these big blocks of cheddar cheese with them. It was dope. No what school you went to. You the West a... Virginia school, bro. West by rolls. God, Virginia. West by God. That's right. You'll know you're in West Virginia because even the fucking chickens and the roosters say, "Fuck God, fuck God." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, very funny. And it won't it won't matter what restaurant West you go God. into, pepperoni West, rolls West, will be on the menu. I, I remember I'm serving us uh, this cardboard like pizza type thing when I was in school, but no. Ah, uh, yes, the old rectangle Bro, school I, pizza. The rectangle school pizza, but when I. With the square I got French bread pepperoni. pizza at yeah, the, that was the Morgan shit. Accelerated when DARPA was studying our brains or whatever. Yeah, motherfucker. 
What's crazy what is that about. that was the best food that they served was the square shitty pizza that they had. Yeah. I, that's why I, I wrote a song about that. Rectangle and square cube pizza. It's cube actually a sad song. Pizza. It's about uh, <laughs> um, child like uh, suicide. Anyway, rectangle square cube. <laughs> It's a fictional uh, love story about two junior high kids falling in love in trigonometry class. But then they go to, um, uh, what do you call it? remote learning, you know, going home, staying home, just logging on to Zoom to do your public schooling. And uh, for some reason, um, that led to an amazing spike in child suicide that's never, it's still climbing. I'm sorry, I lost the thread a bit. Like, uh, so eating pizza led to child suicide? That or happens. No, uh, the that school lockdowns and the COVID craziness. Uh, oh, yeah, and the yeah, interruption yeah, yeah, yeah. In well, it would help if the there were school. some visual aids. Do you have any, like, pizza-related maps we could look at? <laughs> Here's some guy. Some handkerchief of uh, some sort. Some guy in D.C., ping pong, fucking pizza guy. He's got maps. And probably some tunnels. Is there an anagram for I heard the he has a basement? Comet ping pong. Or I'm going to say that pizza is probably the single most popular food all across the United States of America. It is the you single most popular pizza. food at Liberty Radio Studios. What are you talking about? <coughs> yeah, they have a. Uh, it's, yeah. it's pizza. Have, have you ever had the, the Sicilian the perfect version? Food. The Sicilian version of pizza, it's called spinchone. Mm. Spinchone. Mm -hmm. It's like a deep dish. It's yes. a thicker crust. There was a place yeah. at the Apple Blossom Mall in Winchester, Virginia, that used to make the best fucking Sicilian pizza when I was like 10 <laughs> years old. That's some bomb, man. Ate the man. shit out of that sauce. pizza. It's a different sauce. It's different. But good. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. So, so good. But, you know, they Spinchone goes in a lot of seafood-type directions. Because, I mean, the whole thing of anchovies on pizza, that's a Spinchone thing. Anchovy Spinchone. Or or as, well, they don't call them anchovies. They're, they're achuga. So that would be the Spinchone achuga. Uh, right. But anyway. That's, I mean, all over Palermo or Palermo. And that's it. Cause you know, you got Sicilian and Italian. They're two separate languages. Really? Anyway. I've been what's, that what's with you? Are you like part Dago? What's what the fuck? I, how do I not know this? I'm Italian. I should know this. I don't know any of this. Cause my dad uh, and my dad's family came from Borgio, Sicily, and they gotcha. still live there today. Yeah, no, uh, Sicilian is Italian, uh, but it's a really fucked up dialect. I, I understand like one out of every three words. I have no idea what Sicilian, the fuck is. Sicilian was the very first language to derive from Latin. Okay. Sicilian predates Italian. So like, for example, if I count to 10 in Sicilian. Go for it. Um, uno, due, tre, quattro, uh Wow, amazing. Different That's from crazy. Italian, which is uh, uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. That's insane. So, Absolutely. That's correct. But, you know, the uno, due, tre, quattro, I mean, that's like coming from the original un, un, unem, duem, trem. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You can tell that Sicilian was the first derivative from Latin because it's dominated by the U. The 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 letter U is, is just everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Well, according to the Italian lore, Dante created the Italian language. <laughs> no, no, he just publicized it. As a as a fuck off to the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it interesting how Dante's Inferno has those lines in Occitan talking about 
the eradication of the Cathars. Um, but, you know, again, you know, it's, it makes sense because the Inferno is talking about the levels of hell and religious persecution and then the persecution of other uh, religions. Now. And that was the whole thing with Catharism and the Cathars. Anyway. You know, that's where you get into the Pop d'Avignon, the, the popes of Avignon in France, and the divided papacy and all that shit. Catholic history. I had to study all that shit at the seminary or the semen area or whatever it was. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'm going to have to ask you to expand on that a little bit because I, I you said a lot of words there that sort of like, uh, what? The... the you were saying that the the cathards and go back st start that over you, you, you so, so the cathars, he volunteered to go get molested by the seminary the the <laughs> cathars were wiped out you know you had these different um taught them some latin as a divisions yeah. and um cults and sects and and such uh christian um you know and and the uh where Yona gets his freak going. <laughs> the, you know, the papacy just crushed down on because you know they were like the head women priests and believed that priests could just get married and have kids and stuff. And you know, all the cardinals in Rome know that that's you just have kids with your concubines. You don't marry them because you're celibate, right? Um, and the Cathars are doing it wrong, so we need to kill them all. And so they did. What does that have to do with Dante's I'm, I'm, Inferno and and and? But Dante <laughs> is referring to the um, eradication of other schools of thought and other styles of worship uh, by this monolithic demonic papacy. You know. Okay. I mean, there, there's parallels between the 98 Thesis of Martin Luther and Dante's Inferno. They're both just trashing the Vatican. Okay. Which is easy to do. I mean, the Vatican is trash. <laughs> oh, no, you haven't been to it. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, oh, I've, I've been there. to the Vatican. It's amazing. Yeah, I've been to the Piazza San Pietro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Citta del Vaticano. Oh, yeah. In it's, la Citta de Roma. Certo, amico. Of course I've been there. It's yeah, it it it's hard to say that it's not like, hey, pay attention to me. No, pay attention to me. No, pay attention to me. Like uh for anybody who's got the uh ADD, like that's one of the places that you go there and you're like, okay, drop to your knees. I believe in God. It's crazy. Well, what I liked, what I really well, noticed not what I got out of St. Peter's yeah, up, uh, Square was you can clearly see the path of the uh, steeple chase, you know, the, the uh, horse drawn chariots, because that's built on the end of the Circus Maximus, where they had the hippodrome, you know, and the horse races. And, yeah. and that's why it's got that huge, long curve in it, because that's the curved end of the oval of the Roman horse track. Um, and I, I was really Joe. digging that because I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, where we have Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby every year. You know. it, it was a remarkable place, the architecture and all the structures around it. But uh, I couldn't help but think of all the fucking people they murdered. To <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. How they uh, basically were the government before there was government. Yeah. <clears throat> before there was the state, there was the church. That's and right. That, and that's kind of like what they're trying to get back to this monolithic authority that tells everybody how to think. Well, it's going to be it's going to be a new it. trinity, right? They're trying so to get them back there or be, they already have it. Well, yeah, it's going to be the state, the church, and the corporation. Yeah. That'll In be that your new holy trinity, ladies and gentlemen. And it will uh, allow you to be a functional member of the uh, the cyb cybernetic avatar capitalism economy, so that you can also live a, a very pleasurable cybernetic avatar life as well in the metaverse. You know, I have to say on behalf of all, all the first of it ties nations in the Americas, Vatican can 
puck off forever just for the doctrine of discovery. And the Vatican's tied up in the new techno surveillance state that Pope Francis is right along with all this shit. Yep. Yep. Going right along with it. Well, don't forget to tune in for Saturday Night Anarchy tomorrow night over on the new Prisoners channel as well as Mob Rules on Sunday with Tom Cooper and uh, Harps in Tomorrowland down there in, in the land locked down under. That'll be on Sunday. Yona will be back on Monday with the Peasants podcast, right, Yona? That's right. I think we're up to episode 83 or something. Holy like crap. That. Wow. I'll be doing something special for uh, Peasants podcast COVID 84 episode. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Definitely. Tune well, in we'll for that. Get you on that one, Drizzle, for a few minutes, maybe. Tune in Monday through Friday at MediaMonarchy.com. Bam. Blammo. That's right. Daytime, you can listen to, to Media Monarchy. Nighttime, you can uh, check out Liberty Radio. And, That's how it uh, works. Cover your entire uh, entire media day without ever once having to uh, give a shred of your attention to corporate media. There you go. And, and there you have your respite and refuge from the constant COVID cloud shit. Blammo. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out for the bird flu. Good night. Bird flu. You got to watch out more for the cow flu. <laughs> Going on.